Today we want to talk about um, parametric analysis uh, in DODAF, uh, the DOD architecture framework, uh, and the uh, parametric analysis um, have been brought together under the unified profile for DODAF and MODAF. And the thought was, or the view was, that uh, one tool could be used to do both the DODAF described artifacts and then we could use those same DODAF described artifacts and actually do system engineering. So let me introduce you to my uh, containment tree. Uh, every model needs an all views viewpoint. Uh, one of the things we put in here is the timeline because there'll be some uh, timings for, uh, for our SAR activity. There's also a enterprise search and rescue structure. Uh, in my AV2, I have a sum value types, uh, but I also have a glossary, and so uh, those are in my AV2. Um, some of my value types come from the international standard. If I show you my auxiliary uh, project uh, resources, you can see that I'm, I'm uh, using the ISO uh, 80000 uh, extension. Uh, specifically because we're talking about SAR, uh, maritime, and so therefore nautical units. And so uh, you can see I've got quantity, length, I've got length equals nautical mile. And so we're going to use that as we, as we describe uh, some of our parameters. Uh, and so uh, also in my tree I have a place for analysis. Uh, and today, or in this in this presentation, which may cover multiple parts, we'll talk about Monte Carlo analysis. We'll also talk about the simulation configuration uh, and the user interface. Uh, and I'm using Magic Draw 19.0 uh, uh, Service Pack 3 here. Uh, also, in this model, I have behaviors. Uh, I have a system function library. Uh, and uh, I also have a uh, system states library. Uh, in Magic Draw, uh, states have to be owned by something, and because we're trying to do both UPDM, uh, excuse me, both DODAF and SysML, uh, we're using DODAF uh, described artifacts here, uh, but we're calling it ambulance state. And inside the ambulance state, uh, you'll see state diagrams, uh, and we're going to inherit from this ambulance state uh, element. Uh, I also have system threads. This is where we're actually uh, looking at uh, the activity diagrams, the SV4s, uh, that will, and we'll cover those in a bit. Uh, also, I have a data inform information viewpoint. And uh, at this high level, we're, we're talking uh, Div 1. We have some information exchanges. But I also have uh, some... Uh, in, in some cases, my IERs underneath have a system, uh, a, a signal that has the same name. Uh, and in this case, for, for this uh, model, we're going to be pulling in that distance that came from the ISO 8000. Uh, and so when that signal gets sent, you'll, you'll have that variable, uh, and this is a value type. Uh, then uh, I also have other signals, uh, and really these could have been in the div one. Uh, every time you see a package here, this is this is all one model. But if if it's a if it's a bigger thing we are trying to do, you're going to want to be putting these into different libraries uh, that get reused. Uh, but but today in in this model, everything's in one library. So when you see a package called data and information viewpoint. I may have those. Uh, uh, so, so why do I have the div one and also the signal? Because in some diagrams, I want the uh, the information exchange, and in other diagrams, I want to want the distress signal. And by putting them underneath one another, if I ever change the name of the one, I'll be sure to change the name of the other one. Uh, everything should have requirements. Uh, in in in. Uh, in most of our, our systems uh, in the JSIDS environment, uh, we're going to have a library of, of, uh, of requirements. And so a model library 
uh, and we're not covering traceability today. Uh, but we also have some constraints uh, because we're going to look at some variables uh, in this particular demonstration. The, the two variables are how much money does it cost and also what's the, uh, how long does it take. Uh, and also we have a constraint on the total number of victims. Uh, under our structures, uh, we have an actor and component library. Now, uh, you can see we, we call them systems. Uh, if you take a look at this uh, specification of my Coast Hard helicopter, and I look at my applied stereo type, you see that in the UPDM 2.1 L1 compliant mode, uh, you have uh, a system, uh, a DODAF described system, but you also have a block. And so these act as blocks. So uh, one of the things I do in my actor and component library, this is another, this library is typically uh, a read-only uh, model and is used by my other models. Uh, but typically what we want to do is we want to actually put in uh, the, 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 the ports. Now in SysML, I was looking for full ports and proxy ports, but in DODAF, all I have is resource port. And so resource port works both for, for both uh, sets of things. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, so I try to put my ports in here so this library can be used in other analysis and can be used in other descriptive uh, places. So, so we reuse and we share our actor and component library. Now, uh, notice that I have some value properties here. Uh, there's a helicopter price per hour, uh, uh, total flying time, uh, what's the distress distance, uh, and you know I've got a probability here uh, that the helicopter locates the distressed, distressed craft. Now here, what we've done in, uh, let me show you the specification, we have a value property, but we have added an applied stereotype. And so, uh, I guess I need to, to uh, lock this for edit so I can show you. And again, here's my probability. Um, cruise speed, helicopter, okay. And when I go into my specification, here's my value type. And what you're able to do is you just go in and, and check the, the value property. And now we have uh, that. We also have uh, the probability down at the bottom. So the maximum is 0.7 and the minimum is 0.4. And I'll show you how we use those in a bit. Now, uh, if you're running in, uh, in, in, in DODAF 2.0 architect mode uh, and you make this system, uh, you won't necessarily be able to to come in and make a value uh, a value property. Uh, let me show you uh, how we go about that. Uh, so here's here's a, a, a small model. Here's my system. Let me turn the auxiliary resources off. And so here I've got a system, and I got value property one. And what if I if I go to create element? Uh, notice that value property is is not uh, you have to come down to general and now I can do value property and so this would be you know property two all right so this is how we get to value properties uh, in our in our dodef let me switch back okay so moving right along so, so in my actor library, uh, I'm going to put uh, ports. Uh, I'm also going to put value properties that uh, are associated with that helicopter. Uh, recall earlier that, that we put our states someplace else uh, because we're going to inherit them uh, in, in just a bit. Uh, and then, so now I come down to the other part of my structure and that is something called a capability configuration. Capability configuration is really from MODAF, but it works very, very nicely for us. So what I have is a Coast Guard helicopter, uh, and uh, when I, uh, if I look at it, I see that there are two generalizations. 
uh, you can see that it inherits from Coast Guard helicopter. It also uh, inherits from helicopter state. Uh, and, uh, and so this capability configuration is, is for the Coast Guard helicopter. And so it, it will inherit all parts of the state uh, machine. It will also inherit the ports. It will also inherit the, uh, uh, the value property. Uh, so same thing with the Coast Guard motorboat, uh, and uh, and so in my SAR uh, effort, I'm going to be doing a system of systems. Uh, and so uh, when I look in my SV1, uh, you can see that I have my maritime SAR. You you see my uh, uh, these capability configurations, and every one of them. Uh, point to one or more uh, base classifiers and so the states come in uh, the pins come in uh, and and all of these other things and so the capability configuration gives us a chance to actually organize this maritime SAR uh, you can see the composition directed composition uh, it comes down to a control center you'll see the mobile health vehicle you'll see the Coast Guard helicopter Coast Guard motorboat You'll see the ship in distress, and all of these are part of Maritime SAR. Now, uh, when I look at the connectivity, uh, you can see here's the pins that I inherited from uh, ship. This is the, the pins that I inherited from Coast Guard helicopter. Also, the motorboat, uh, the control center. And then the control center is going to get information from the ship, the helicopter, and motorboat. But it will also then send information to the operational center. Also, it will send information to the mobile health vehicle. All right, I think that's the, the end of my review of the containment tree. Uh, traceability we'll, we'll talk about later. Uh, but my user viewpoints. Uh, this is where I typically put my user viewpoints. Uh, there'll be some CV1 information in CV2, which I'll cover in a minute. And then there's some operational viewpoints uh, that uh, we want to be able to take a look at. But let's leave that uh, for the discussion of the diagrams themselves. So here's my model. Always put a start page that kind of gives you some navigation. And so we have an OV1. Uh, now this is just a image. Uh, uh, a lot of people try to actually uh, build or, or design the system in the OV-1, but that's not what the OV-1 is there for. The OV-1 is there purely uh, to kind of uh, uh, give people kind of that there's an object in distress, there's a rescue node, either UAV or lifeboat or helicopter, uh, there's some type of tactical C2 node, they might have some communications, uh, and and then there's a, a place of safety. So OV1 is, is just for a very high level. Uh, then moving down uh, in the DODAF path, uh, I need to be able to give a SAR vision. All right, and this should be familiar to many of you uh, because the SAR mission is the same mission that the OMG used to describe DODAF. And so I thought it would be great to, to, to execute this particular uh, uh, mission uh, using parametric analysis. So I have a whole life configuration. There's my times, the start date, end date of the land phase and the, and the maritime SAR phase. And you see the, uh, uh, the two capabilities. I'm able to do a land SAR capability and a maritime SAR capability. Uh, when I decompose my capabilities or I look at my taxonomy, you can see from SAR as a whole uh, there's a, inherits a land SAR inherits from SAR and maritime SAR inherits from SAR. Uh, but they're both components of the U.S. SAR capability. And then if you look at the uh, directed uh, uh, the composition here, you can see that SAR consists of search, rescue, assistance, and recovery. Uh, moving down to capabilities versus requirements. Uh, there's a price constraint, uh, there's a time constraint, uh, there's a maximum price of the rescue ship, rescue helicopter, uh, and, and you know that this is going to be for short range uh, search and rescue. So that kind of uh, ends the, the capability of viewpoints. In the JSIDS domain, we might put other diagrams together. Uh, 
uh, some traceability diagrams and things like that. Uh, but for today, this is good enough for us. Now, uh, based on those requirements, then there is an operational OV2. And here's where we have a place of safety. Uh, this is where we want to get the, uh, the, the rescue victims. Uh, there's a object in distress. Uh, there's a tactical C2 node. Uh, it gets the information, sends information out to the search node. Uh, the track information is passed to the rescue node and uh, they're going to check the medical condition. And so this is uh, uh, performers. Uh, it's just a, a really a high level abstraction of what this looks like, but your search uh, or your rescue node could be either a boat or uh, it could be a, a helicopter uh, for our purposes. And uh, in some cases, the node is, is, is both. Uh, the search, the one who's doing the search is the same one that's doing the, the rescue. So then we come to the most important thing, and this is where our requirements derive from, and that is the mission thread. Uh, and so you see across the top the nodes that we described in the OV2. Uh, we see we want to send a distress signal if I'm an object in distress. Uh, I want to be able to initiate my search. Uh, and uh, what we want to be able to do then is as we begin these things, we want to be able to evaluate the distance of the distress object. We want to evaluate the number of victims if there is a search and rescue that's possible. If it's not possible, then we just kind of stop. Uh, but uh, then, then the next step, the search node does the actual searching. Uh, he arrives in the uh, distress signal location. If the distress ship is found, uh, then he continues to locate the victims. If it's not, then he enlarges the local search area. And what we see here is you see decision points and information uh, that's necessary uh, for uh, for the execution of this mission thread. And that's what a mission thread basically talks about, it, rescuing victims. We want to be able to check and see if there's medical assistance needed. And if there is, uh, then we're going to provide that medical assistance. If there's not, then we'll just return victims to shore. And so the OV uh, 5B is very critical because this is where we get the mission thread uh, that our system needs to support. Now coming down to the system layer, and you've already seen the SV1, and this is where we have our capability configurations laid out. Uh, and we also have two communications. We're using service access uh, because we want something that's a block uh, so we can pass it. Uh, and in DODAF, uh, the information exchange, at least in, in, uh, in, in the latest version of Magic Draw, won't do that for us. When we get to UAF, uh, the information exchange or the data uh, uh, element uh, actually does uh, double as a block. And so anyway, in this case, it's a workaround uh, so we can have uh, that kind of information. And you've seen the connectivity. So uh, let's go next is uh, we want to be able to, to uh, look at our states. Uh, and in this case, I've got a ship, and uh, the ship has a, a, a particular state. Uh, and so uh, his current state is, uh, is just his current state. He's, he's sailing. Uh, and then there will be a signal. Uh, in order to transition, you can see the signal is uh, the uh, emergency signal, all right? Uh, and then there is an op opaque behavior. Uh, and this is where we're going to calculate using a opaque behavior, we're going to calculate the distance from shore being a random number times uh, 150 plus 1. And so that will give us the information that we need uh, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to be able to do a parametric analysis. And then what we want to be able to do is when we get to the emergency, there's a do, you have entry, you have do, and you have exit uh, possibilities in a state diagram. And so we're going to say the ship is in distress. And so here's the di diagram. Uh, now this here is actually not a function action uh, that we would normally see. Uh, this is actually a, uh, an opaque action. And you can see that uh, I am going to create the distance from shore, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to pass that out. 
and then uh, we're going to send that distress signal via port 1. And then uh, here you can see in my wait state uh, I have a, a timing of 250 minutes uh, before the ship actually sinks. All right, So I need to find him before he sinks uh, and I get this distress signal uh, via P1. Okay. Now, uh, in the operational center, uh, what happens is we, he's in regularly operating. Uh, when the distress signal is, is sent, and you can see this again, uh, that's the signal. Distress signal is sent. Uh, what you'll see is uh, he has a do, and that is to determine the emergency response. Uh, and so we're passing in that link, that nautical mile uh, value. Uh, and to make this all look orange, we just changed the color. It didn't come out that by, by default. Uh, but now we have determining emergency response. So we're passing in the value. And, and now we have here uh, another opaque uh, uh, block. All right, so this is a, a opaque action, and what we're doing is the distress distance has been sent in, and so we're going to call that in one, uh, and the out is is also the distress distance, and so we're just we're saying that whatever value gets passed in here, we're also going to pass it out here. We also have a a uh, uh, a fork node here where we're actually passing the distance here. So, uh, but you see this interesting little fellow right here. That's called a uh, duration constraint. Let me slip over and show you how we built the duration constraint. Uh, the duration constraint, let's see, here we go. Uh, let's talk about functions for a minute. Here I've got a function library, and I've got function number one. All right, he's also up here. On, and I, let me uh, control D. Yeah, okay, I'm, I got rid of him. All right, so um, diagrams uh, inside, or especially activity diagrams uh, inside uh, uh, Magic Draw uh, have to be inside a function. All right, and so what you have here is a function, and then here you have uh, a function, but his real job is to hold this diagram. And so my function libraries, my functions will, sit, will, will lay in my function library and my, my, uh, my diagrams will, will be separate and I'll put them in a separate place uh, but I'll use the functions from the function library. So here we are, I've got this diagram, I'm going to pull the function over here and when you take a look at this duration constraint uh, you can click on that and you can say I want a duration for this particular function and you can see it says zero seconds to one second you go to specification you come here to constraints uh, and uh, if you uh, look here you can see the minimum is going to be you can set that to say 10 seconds uh, and then I can say make that uh, 40 seconds uh, and so you can see now that this particular uh, function action has a duration uh, from 10 seconds to 40 seconds. Now notice over here in the containment tree, uh, you can see that the, those durations are really a critter of the diagram. Uh, they're not really inside the function at all, uh, but they're inside the diagram. And so I have uh, this thing that's called a duration constraint. Uh, and then I have two uh, blank elements uh, that are called duration observations. All right, and they're blank and they're not named, and we leave them alone because they, you see I have a timed event at 10 seconds or a timed event at 40 seconds. Uh, so when I get to my simulation settings, I'll be able to either tell them to say use the minimum or use the maximum or use the average or randomly pick a number between 10 seconds and 40 seconds. And so that's kind of how the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the duration constraint uh, gets built. Okay, moving back to our model. 
All right, so what's happening here is we have a, a, a value being pushed in, all right? Uh, remember in the value, we set that value back in the, uh, back in here in behaviors in my system states, all right? So here was my uh, distressed ship state, and here was the, uh, so here was where the value gets set, and it gets passed into do ship in distress. And so you can see here's a piece of JavaScript that says I'm going to the distance from shore equals random with the paren star 150 plus one uh, semicolon. Okay, so that's where that came from. So we get that information in here and then uh, not only can function actions or functions or uh, call behavior actions if you're in SysML or uh, in operational activities you can do the same thing but they can have these durations uh, but then because I've got a value coming in uh, I can reason about that here at this next place and what we did here is in the guard we said uh, if the if the uh, distress distance is greater or equal to 50 then I want to choose the helicopter and then uh, the other side was if the distress distance is less than 50 uh, then I want to use the uh, the, the, the lifeboat SAR, uh, and so and then I've got these two uh, two uh, pins. So the value gets passed out here. Uh, the control flow is actually moving it either to the helicopter SAR. So what happens is the value comes in, but the control flow has to move and get here. Then the signal use helicopter is going to fire. Uh, if I look at my helicopter states. So you can see use helicopter is called at that time. And in the entry, I'm going to start the sim time, which is a value that I set in my simulation clock. And then I'm going to do search with helicopter. Uh, if I recover the, the victims, then I'm going to return do return to coast. And then when I exit, I'm going to uh, set the risk you finish or the total amount of time. I'm going to set that equals to the sim time minus the rescue start plus flying time. All right, and those are uh, just uh, JavaScript. Uh, you see over here on the exit, you see it's another opaque behavior, uh, and the, we, we just lay out uh, those variables. Remember where I put those variables, not here in the states because those are behaviors, but the variables, uh, the ones that I want to maintain a, a library on, uh, are here. So flying time, uh, the distress distance, the cruise speed, uh, and then there's a, a victim's integer here and also a, a rescue start time. So so here, here are the elements uh, that are coming. Uh, and again, I'm inheriting those inside uh, my capability configuration. So, uh, so we want to use the helicopter. So, so let's go back to the state. And uh, in my helicopter, uh, if I do search with helicopter. Um, now, let me tell you about this guy right here. This is, uh, uh, this is my jumper code, okay? And what I mean by that is inside a state, when I set a do, uh, I actually put uh, an activity uh, a diagram uh, down here. Okay, and so see, here's the holder, and you see this search with helicopter. But I don't want all of my functions uh, and all of my analysis to be hidden inside the helicopter state. So all I do is pass it in, and then give it a function call of search with helicopter. Uh, and then uh, I actually move over to my, uh, my system threads. All right, so here's my helicopter system thread. And I'm going to search with helicopter. And I can either double click here or I can open search with helicopter. So I give it a start. And we do the, uh, back over here, common. We, we do the, uh, the constraint thing again, five to 30 minutes, uh, and we send that control flow. We also are passing in the distance. Uh, and then this is a 
uh, again, a, an opaque object. When I look at its specification, you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm setting the, the, uh, the, the distressed instance that was passed in to n, and then flying time is going to equal that n value divided by the cruise speed times 60. Because I want to be able to measure this in minutes, you can see the default language is JavaScript. All right, so he's going to fly to that period of time. Then he's going to search for the distressed aircraft. Now, uh, what we've done here at this decision node is we've, we've put in a probability. Remember back over here inside our, our, uh, our structure, my actor library, uh, there is a helicopter locates distressed craft. All right. And so what we did was here on this sky, uh, on this uh, uh, flow, we, we, we have added uh, along the function edge, we have added the probability, all right, distribution. And so uh, uh, you can, uh, if it's not there, you can add it back uh, and you can, uh, so, and that probability, uh, is the probability that the helicopter locates the distressed craft. So back over here, you can see that uh, the helicopter, uh, and we can see again, I have that uniform distribution here, and I'm going to pick between uh, 0.4 and 0.7. If I used a normal distribution, then I would have an average, and then I would have a standard deviation. And so the probability that I locate the distressed aircraft is going to be uh, equal to uh, the probability that we put back over here in our actor library. Uh, the probability that he doesn't uh, see it is one minus helicopter locates the distressed craft. And so if he doesn't uh, locate the distressed craft, we're going to want to search for an additional 20 minutes and then ask the question again. And at the end of the question, we're going to either hoist victims from water because we found them, or we're going to abort. Now, interestingly, what we've done here is we're, if we're hoisting our victims from water, we can see the specification. Uh, uh, you can see vic victims equal one. All right. Back over here, victims, there's my integer to hold that information. Now, if I abort, uh, and looking in this uh, opaque action, then victims equals zero, all right? Uh, and then I stop search or I recover to shore. Now remember, my, in my states, recover to shore was what happened uh, when I, uh, that, that, that's the signal that's going to start uh, returning to coast. And, uh, and so I've got to do and return to coast. Again, I've got that little jumper uh, that, uh, that goes out to my system threads, right? Uh, and so I get a return to shore. And again, uh, there's a flying time equals flying time plus distress distance divided by cruise speed times 60. So I'm able to, to, uh, to, to equate everything to minutes. Uh, and then I've got a, in, so this is an opaque action, and then this is unloading the victims, and it takes 10 minutes to 30 minutes to unload the victims. Uh, and so, uh, so that's, that, that's how all of that uh, works. Now, uh, let me go back to my start. All right, so uh, so I've, I've I've laid those out, uh, and and these are just dependencies here. So I got a ship in distress. Uh, you can see the operation center is going to either do something with the operational center. Uh, he's going to determine you know where it goes. Then they're either going to search with helicopter and return to coast, or they're going to search with boat and recover victims to shore. When you look at the boat, uh, you can see the same kind of thing going on. Again, we're put passing in that length uh, that's in nautical miles. Uh, we have a function action that says prepare for SAR. Uh, we're navigating to the distressed location. Uh, we're searching for the uh, distressed aircraft. Same kind of probabilities going on here. Uh, and you either bring the victims on board or we abort the sea rescue. And then we recover to shore. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of how that particular one works. So... Um, 
So here we have, uh, like I said, all of these for the, uh, the, the, the uh, helicopter and also for the motorboat. And you can see we've defined the ports, their, their resource ports. We've defined some prices. We've done all those kinds of things. All right, uh, so, so much for the behaviors. Now, what we've done is uh, you've seen the SV-1. This is the Maritime SAR where we took uh, these capability configurations and then we uh, showed a configuration that, uh, that had as a directed composition uh, these pieces. The control center uh, also owns the, uh, the ambulance, all right? Uh, and so uh, you can see for the Coast Guard helicopter, uh, again, I, I have inherited uh, in my base classifier uh, the pins or the, or the ports and the, uh, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the variables uh, from my actor library and I've also inherited the states. So this allows me to use this actor library in places where I don't really want to even have to deal with states. And, uh, and so there are some places where I'm going to have structure, uh, mostly structure uh, modeling uh, and not necessarily behaviors. Uh, and so we did that for, for the Coast Guard helicopter, the motorboat, uh, the control center. Uh, and in the control center, you can see P32 and P31. Uh, these are subports that talk to P3. Uh, if you recall, uh, in our uh, in our SV1, uh, we showed the connectivity, uh, and then here in the control center, we see how that that hooks together. So, so then here is the capability configuration uh, for our overall SAR mission. I want to actually be able to execute uh, these relations. All right, we have a mission price calculation uh, and what we've done is we've we've created uh, a we've taken the attributes. Uh, remember the constraints were back up here uh, in my requirements. So here was a constraint and it was the uh, total mission price uh, and these were the values helicopter time, ambulance time, boat time, boat price, ambulance price uh, and then I had a ac the algorithm is boat time type times boat price plus helicopter time times helicopter price and it goes on but when you add these things up uh, then uh, what we said is in this constraint we want the money to be less than or equal to or less than uh, five thousand uh, dollars. So what what happens? See, is is inside our our uh, capability configuration is I've taken this maritime SAR, and in order to create this, I I right click and I create diagram, and uh, I'm going to get out of DoDAF mode, uh, and I go to my perspectives. I want to be a system engineer. And so here I, I create a diagram and I want to do a system L activity or parametric diagram. So because I inherited these things, here's my constraint. Uh, inside my control center, I have the mobile health vehicle. And so if I'm trying to watch for price, or I'm trying to watch for my finish time as far as how long it takes uh, or my transportation time. Uh, and then for my helicopter, uh, my helicopter will have flying time, uh, a rescue finish, and I've got a uh, helicopter per hour price. And then I've got a, uh, uh, for the lifeboat, uh, again, because I, these are all inherited, I can take the boat price, the, I can take the uh, rescue time, uh, and, uh, and so on. And so the total mission price uh, and the uh, mission price, and I can hit OK. And so what it does is it gives me these pieces of information uh, because I selected the control center. Uh, 
it, it brought the ambulance piece in, it brought the transportation time. Uh, I can then uh, take the various pins uh, and I can recreate uh, the uh, uh, this uh, mission price. Then I also had the mission time calculation uh, and in here I am I am uh, uh, I take the total rescue time here for the motorboat or the total rescue time for the helicopter and the transportation time uh, and so you can see the constraints and again just using the capability configuration these actually act like blocks uh, and because it inherits uh, I've got my entire block set up and ready to roll so uh, let me go back to my start alright so down here I have a simulation configuration and what I've done here is uh, in my timing properties I've given it a start time, I'm getting an end time, uh, a step size of one. Uh, I'm using minutes. My variable that you've seen, sim time, when I'm setting the sim time to start, uh, I put those in my, my various uh, uh, opaque objects. And then that duration element, I'm going to, I could pick minimum, I could do max, I could do average, or I could do random. Okay? So we're doing that, uh, and so uh, the execution target is Maritime SAR. I got the Maritime SAR. I was able to pull it over here and just drop it on the uh, uh, on the simulation configuration, uh, and so I named it SAR Mission Configuration. Uh, and um, in this case, I was doing uh, number of runs would just be one. Uh, and uh, and so we want to see uh, what's going on. Now the other thing that I did was uh, here in the analysis I made a small user interface and I created a GUI. Uh, and in this GUI uh, I wanted to be able to 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 get my distress signal to 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 uh, uh, be able to do this without uh, without having to go into the well, let's talk about that. Let me let me close that. All right. So here I am. I've got my um, simulation configuration, and I want to run an analysis. So I come to structures. I come to Maritime SAR and I go to simulate, run. And uh, there's, uh, so you can see the values uh, that we were looking for. Uh, I don't need to see those tools here. I really would like to see. So there's my mission time, there's my mission price, uh, there's the information about the helicopter and its values. Uh, you can see the lifeboat and its values. Uh, and when I hit run, you can see that the four states or the, the, the states that we inherited are then e executed. Uh, and for the uh, ship states, uh, we want to, uh, in this case, we want to send that emergency signal. Uh, and so what I, I will run that uh, and we'll take a look. So we start the signal come back up to Maritime SAR and you can see the communication happening and we're going into our emergency that we're determining uh, whether I'm going to use a helicopter or whether we're going to use a a lifeboat and this could take some time uh, one to three minutes uh, and then all of the other uh, duration constraints uh, we've got some some uh, some timings on those as well and so uh, we don't want to wait uh, for the 30 to 40 minutes. So what we'll do is we'll stop this and we'll go and we'll run this from the SAR mission configuration. So come back up here, hit stop. All right, so now I can go to uh, uh, containment. Let me go over to my user interface. 
so I've got that going for me. Uh, the SAR simulation configuration. What we're able to do here is in the timing properties, uh, we put a st time uh, a step size of one and a time unit of minutes and the end time. Uh, and so, uh, so here we are. We're going to run this uh, using the SAR mission configuration. Uh, and I think there's one more value that I needed to hit. Uh, specification, uh, timing properties, step delay. I want to do uh, uh, 0 0.01667. That way we can slow it down just a little bit uh, as we're watching the SAR mission configuration. So let's run it. All right, so here we have our, our little, little uh, distress signal. All right. So because I made the uh, the, the, the the GUI uh, again, it's going to show me my mission price, total mission time, and victims recovered, yes or no. I'm going to hit the stress signal, and you can see it takes off. And you can see it doesn't take the full three minutes because I put a step size in there and, and I tried to do it. Uh, so you can see it now will go through the... So it's going through and it's it's uh, it's flying to the to, to the place. It's searching. Okay, it uh, didn't find it, uh, so the probability didn't hit. So it's going to the additional search. They did find it. Now they're hoisting the victims from the water. Notice that the number of victims, the, the one is victims recovered, one is yes, zero is no. So you can see that it ran the, the little JavaScript we had there. And so then it runs the Monte Carlo, uh, excuse me, it runs the, uh, the parametric. Uh, it determines what the mission price was, uh, what the mission time was, uh, and you can see that we exceeded the requirement to do it in, uh, in $5,000 or less. So this is part one. I'm going to stop here. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going to, in part two, uh, we'll, we'll show you how we add a Monte Carlo uh, to this DODAF uh, model.